Hey there, math students. Today is the day that you have been waiting for because today is the day that you get to use your calculator. Hooray! I know that you have been slogging through all these operations without a calculator and I'm so proud of you. So just give yourself a pat on the back right now. You've been doing awesome. Today we're gonna to talk about using our calculators. Now, a lot of you might not have a calculator that does fractions. I mean, if we were at school, I could just hand you all out calculators. That would be ideal and they would all be exactly the same. But we're not together in a school building, so we have to work with what we've got. So first of all, if you have a calculator that you want to use, you need to make sure that it has two buttons. First of all, it needs to have one of these looking things right here. You see how it's like a box over, like a box with a fraction line and then another box? It would need to have something like that. That's how you input fractions. The other thing it needs to have is a fraction to decimal button. See how it says F to D and it's got those little arrows? If, and by the way, this is a TI-36X Pro, just if you're wondering. If you think you have something like that that will work, then wonderful. I'm going to include some other videos made by the other guy that will tell you how to use those. If you don't think you have something that works, this video is for you because I have some web-based calculators that will help us do everything that we need to do. So instead of doing a real notes page today, let's just look at the homework assignment. We'll take some problems from it and we will talk through how to do it with these web-based calculators. I'm including the links in your assignment page, so if you don't already have those pulled up, you might want to go ahead and launch those links. I have my assignment here and then I have the first calculator link. This is for the basic calculator. And then I have the second calculator link. Let's scroll up there. This is the fraction calculator here. Yours might look a tiny bit different because I've been doing some math on it and it's all expanded. But as long as it says fraction calculator at the top, it's the same thing. All right, so let's get started with our assignment. Let's just look at problem number one. Negative 46 minus 28. Now you guys could do this on your own pencil and paper, but let's learn how to use our calculator. So I'm wanting, I want you to use your regular calculator here because there's no fractions and no decimals or anything. So I want you to use that regular standard calculator and we're gonna do negative 46 minus 28. So negative 46 minus 28. And then it, see it's giving you the answer right here already, negative 74. That's all you have to do for that one. Let's look at another problem. Um, let's do a negative 74 plus a negative 16. So as you know, when you have this double sign, you need to think of it as um, either a plus or a minus. What do you do when you have different signs? We subtract, so the plus and the minus would become a minus sign. That's how you would work that. But let's just test our calculator and see if it'll work. What if we put both signs in? So I'm gonna do negative 74 plus minus 16 and see what it does. So let's clear it out. Negative 74 plus negative or minus 16. And look, it's given us the right answer without us even having to simplify it. So if you want to do that way, that is totally fine. Let's look at our third problem. Negative 35 minus negative 59. Again, let's just put all that in the calculator and see what it does. Negative 35, let's clear it. Negative 35 minus negative 59. Okay, for this calculator, it's working. If you have a different calculator at home, I don't know if it'll work the same way. They're all kind of different. But if you're using this web-based calculator, that will work for you. Okay, let's look at some other problems. What if we were looking at number five right here? Negative 384 over negative three. Well, this calculator right here is not ideal for working with fractions. So let's pop over to the fraction calculator. You could get to it from this screen by clicking fraction right here or you could just use that other link that I gave you. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down to where it says, uh, which one did I wanna use? Let's do the Simplify Fractions Calculator. There are several that would work here, but let's do the Simplify Fractions. So what was my fraction again? Negative 384 over negative three. Okay, so there wasn't a number out in front, was there? So we're gonna just put a zero here. And then on top, we're going to do negative 384. And on the bottom, we're going to do negative 3. And now we're going to calculate, and it's going to simplify for us. It looks like, look up here for your answer, it looks like it's 128. So your answer here is 128. 
Okay, so let's look at another problem. What if we were doing number six? Well, the thing you really need to know here is what is the operation? You have two numbers in parentheses. That operation is going to be multiplication. So negative 54 times 73, you would just use this calculator. Negative 54 times 73, I believe it was. And so uh, unless I got the numbers wrong, that would be your answer, okay? Let's look at another problem. Let's look at number nine. Okay, now number nine has no fractions anywhere, but it does have decimals. When you have decimals and no fractions, all you have to do is use that regular calculator again and just enter it in. Negative 19.5 minus, I don't remember what the other number was, 14.16. All right, there you go. There's your answer. So just knowing which calculator to use is really important. If you feel like you're getting the hang of it, great, but you've got some different problems at the bottom of the page, so you might want to just either fast forward a little bit or hang in there till the end. I'll try to make this quick. Let's keep looking. I want to look at number 14 next. You have a decimal in a fraction in number 14. Can our fraction calculator handle this? Well, let's find out. We're going to do the simplify fractions calculator again. So still a zero there. And then what was the number? Negative 0.74. Negative 0.74. And then on the bottom, it was negative 80. So down here, we'll just do negative 80 and then calculate. It's thinking and look, okay, here are your results. And your result in decimals, which is what you want, well, it doesn't have to be decimals, but decimals are fine here. Um, your result is 0 0.00925, okay? So that's how you do that one. What do we need to do next? How about number 16? It's got a repeating decimal. So we're actually going to have to use our brain just a little bit here, <laughs> which is good. We like using our brains, right? So first of all, we're going to use, um, well, there's no button for repeating decimal on the first calculator. So we're going to use the second calculator, which means we have to turn this number into a fraction. So what is 0.44444 repeating? What does that represent? Well, if you remember from November 2nd, from Monday, I gave you this chart and it tells you all these common repeating decimals. And look over here, we have 0.444 repeating forever. And it shows us that that is equal to four ninths. So here's what you're gonna do. Let's look at our problem again. It was this one. So we have negative 15 and four ninths. We know that now. So let's put that into our calculator on the fraction page. Negative 15 and four ninths. Here's our mixed numbers calculator. Negative 15 and 4 ninths. Just use that slash key, right? The little, this little slash. All right, what was the rest of our problem? Times, okay, let's put in our operation. So I'm gonna drop down and do times. And now we need to figure out what's put over here. It says negative 3.75. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my negative three, negative, three. Actually, you know what? I'm going to be lazy and see if it'll do it this way. Maybe 3.75. Will it calculate that? I don't know. Maybe it will. It looks like it did. Oh, that was nice. Okay. I was going to say you could put it in as negative three and three fourths, but it's calculating it like this. So you can go ahead and use it that way. It looks like your answer would be 695 over 12. Or you could give it as 57 and 11 twelfths. But remember, the improper fractions are preferred in this um, in this unit. And if you'd rather give decimals, it'd be 57.916 repeating. Ignore that 7 at the end. That's just rounded off at the end. It would be 916 with the line over the 6. Okay? All right, let's do another problem. Looking at number 17, this is another place where you're going to use that mixed numbers calculator, which is this one. So let's clear it out. So for number 17, you have negative 18 and 5, 6. You just enter it like that. And it's going to be minus a negative 4 and 2 elevenths. Oh, look, you can tell I did that before. Okay. And you calculate. 
it gives you the result in decimals or the result in fractions. The result in fractions is precise. It's better to use that. If you were going to do the decimals, you see how it's a repeating 515151, five, so you would need to do a line over the 5 and 1, but it's better just to do the fraction. Okay, what should we do next? Um, number 18, you, okay, so I just want to show you number 18 because you have to enter it with the zero in front. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, or maybe you don't. You could just use this fraction calculator up here. So for number 18, you would just do negative 7. And remember, you can put that negative with the 7 or with the 20, but not with both. You have to choose one or the other, okay? Otherwise, you're going to make it positive, and it's not positive, it's negative. Adding is what we want here. And then 5 over 22. Okay, so then you get your answer to be, look at your decimal down here, negative 27 over 220. I sure am glad we didn't have to do that by hand. Finding that common denominator would be a real pain. Okay, now what about number 19? You have a fraction that looks like this, and then you have a mixed number. In this case, I would definitely use the mixed numbers calculator, which is this one. It says mixed numbers calculator. And for the mixed number here, you don't even have to put a zero. You just have to enter the fraction like it is. You have to put negative 12 over 11, and then it's plus negative 2 and 10 over 13. It's a really good calculator. You can enter things a lot of different ways. There are probably other ones on this page that you can use to answer a lot of these. I'm just kind of showing you. I'm trying to show you at least one way to solve all these problems. So that was number 19. I would like to skip down and look at two more problems. We're going to look at 25 and we're going to look at 28. So let's do 25 first. So let's see if our mixed numbers calculator, I had a different way to do this, but I'm kind of excited about this mixed numbers calculator right now. So let's just go ahead and wing it and see if it will do this. So we're on number 25, okay? Let me show you on this page just to be sure. 25, see how it's a decimal here and a mixed number there? Let's see if we can do this. So negative 13.2 plus 8 and 3 fifths. Calculate. Um, and you come down here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Negative four and three fifths. It's so simple once the computer does all of that work for you. So that's how you do number 25. Number 28 is a little bit more complicated again because we have a repeating decimal. So we have to know what to convert that as so that you can put it in as a fraction. We're going to use the mixed numbers calculator again. So let me go ahead and clear this out. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Number 28. See, we have this 5.8333 repeating forever. So I'm going to take this 0.83 repeating and look on my chart to figure out what that represents fraction-wise. So I'm looking for 0.83333. And there it is. See, 0.8333. So it would be whatever the number was out in front and 5 sixths. So let's put that in our calculator. Um, again, the number in front was a 5. So we're going to do 5 and 5 sixths. 5 and 5 sixths. And then the rest of it is pretty easy. You select subtract and then 14 and a half. And calculate. And you're done. Looks like your answer there would be negative 8 and 2 thirds. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions about how to do this, let me know. And um, otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching.